Let's look at how can we generalize linear uh, classifiers to solve a multi-class classification problem. So here we have uh, 10 digits, right? So, um, and the idea is we want to define, uh, use linear classifiers to learn how to put, you know, classify new samples, put them in the right class, okay? So in this case, what we have, this is called the generalization of the binary classification problem. So we have our training samples, their corresponding labels, but the label uh, belongs to a C, it can belong to one of these C classes. So we don't have, you know, um, only two choices, but we have C uh, choices, okay? So we need to pick one out of those. Right, so how can we do this? So this is the problem. So how can we solve this classification problem using linear classifiers? So here, what do we have? We have three, three classes, right? So, and what we use, we use, you know, like uh, these two features. So this is, you know, these are the coordinates, of course, of these points in our feature space, right? Um, X1, one, let's say this is sample one x1, 2, right? How can we do this uh, using linear classifiers? So I would like to remind you, if you guys remember the very, very first lecture, I introduced these four concepts that are uh, very uh, popular uh, in machine learning, how we formulate, formalize problems, how we solve them. One of them is this one. So I would like to refresh your memory and about the third one, which is generalizing a particular ML solution to solve a bigger problem. So going from the particular solution to the general or universal problem, and here going from solving a binary classification problem, trying to generalize that solution to uh, a multi-class classification problem, okay? So any ideas on how can we potentially oops, uh, classify these guys using a linear classifier? Like a linear, uh, um, like a set of linear classifiers, not only one. Yes. Very good. One versus all. So we can solve, you know, one by one, basically, and then fuse all those uh, those solutions together. So this is what what is the solution about, right? So here. Uh, this is what we call the one versus all strategy. So the key idea is to learn a two-class classifier, the binary classifier, the, to distinguish between samples in a particular class C, let's say the third class, and from all other classes. So it's one versus all. So points in this class will have label plus one, and then points in not C class will have a negative uh, label. Okay? Now... The second step would be to solve this for all C classifiers. So we're going to build how many models, how many uh, uh, linear classifiers will estimate C linear classifiers. So we need to solve C SVM problems, okay? Right, so when solving this, this is a key idea. So all points from class C, they will lie, we, they will lie on the positive side of its decision boundary. So if this is, you know, the classifier for the crosses, so the points lying on top, of this, like the, so the crosses will lie what we call on the positive uh, side of this boundary, okay, the blue boundary, so this is the positive side, and points uh, lying on the, basically from the other classes, they lie on the negative side, so this is the negative side of the classifier, okay, so these are one versus all. Now, let's apply this rule to this case and see what we get. Okay, now for example, let's start with class one. So we, I, we, I want to distinguish one from all the other classes. So this is a line that separates C equals one, okay. So class one from two and three. And then we have, we want to separate class two from three and one. So maybe something like that. And then class three from one and two. Okay, maybe not that good this way. Okay, just approximately. Okay, now let's apply the rule. So we know that points that 
or here, so since this is the boundary for C1, this is the positive side of it. So all points here have a positive label assigned, you know, by class 1. And then we have for the second class, so this is the positive, you know, these points have also a positive label, plus 1, assigned by the second classifier. And then we have the third classifier. We know that all points lying in this uh, side of this hyperplane, they're also positively classified by classifier 3. So just looking at this solution, we know that any point that it lies in this space, it will automatically get a plus 1, a positive label by C1, because here we have only one color, that's the yellow, right? And then this is what we call a non-ambiguous area. Now, for the three, if we have new points lying right there, they will be automatically classified as threes. So because this space is a plus one by classifier three, right? Now let's look at these, the other spaces. So, for example, any point that lies in this space, okay, it will be assigned a plus one by three, C equals three, and it will also be assigned a plus one by uh, c equals two, right? So this is quite confusing because we say these, you know, this is basically a confusing area where a point has been assigned exactly the same labels by two classifiers. We don't know which one is true, right? So we cannot classify points lying in these spaces. So this is quite problematic because you don't know where your point or your feature will lie, a sample will lie. So sometimes you might have like points lying right here, right? You don't know. So how can you classify them? So this is a good, you know, preliminary solution, but it's not, you know, um, uh, feasible and applicable to all cases. So, right, so this is, you know, how can we formulate this problem, right? So if we write it mathematically, so a point XP belongs to class C if it satisfies the following inequalities. First one, it is you know, uh, it has a positive, it lies on the positive side of the classifier, uh, of the classification decision boundary by class C, so it's like, you know, lies on that side, but it, it has a negative, basically, uh, label for all other classifiers different from C, okay? So these are problematic because they have been assigned positive labels, but by not only the right classifier, but by a second classifier. So this condition is not very uh, satisfied, so it's quite problematic, and you can see it right here, right? So we have these problematic areas that we want to solve. So how can we do that? This is something to think about, right? How can we generalize, how can we create a more uh, generic solution, right? Uh, and get a better idea so that we can classify any point uh, in our space. So we know that each classifier, it gives basically, um, it predicts a value that is either closer to plus 1 or minus 1, right? So sometimes if it gives you, for example, a negative uh, 89, uh, 98, it means like it has, you know, label, it's closer to this label. So basically the idea is to take those, to take the votes by all classifiers and take the highest value because the higher the value the more confident you are if let's say hypothetically by your linear classifier you get something like 0.6 right this classifier is not very confident because well it's closer to one than negative one right but it's still a low value than when you're getting 0.9 by another classifier so you'll trust this classifier more so the idea here is basically we want to generalize this so uh, we want to assign labels for each sample xi by finding not only the classifier that produces the positive evaluation for this, okay, but by assigning xi the class label automatically with the largest evaluation, okay, even if it's negative. So the largest weight, the largest prediction. So this is the new equation here that works well. And here what we're looking for, we're looking for to predict the, the label, right, by taking the maximum value over all sets of classifiers of this quantity. And then once we find the C, 
j equals c, for example, equals 2, I know that this is actually the label of my class. Okay, so that's a quite a simple idea. And this is what we call the fusion rule. Okay, so this is the fusion rule for linear classifiers. It has two advantages. The first one, it assigns labels to the entire space, and it also can effectively handle overlapping classes, as you can see here. So this is an example. If you, we want to separate these guys, right, you can see there are we're, there is an overlap between these classes, right? So even with that overlap, the fusion um, linear classifier aggregational model is able to handle that. And ultimately, we get this nice separation or partition of the space uh, into different um, uh, subspaces where different points lie in corresponding classes, okay? So that's the basic idea of, of you know, a simple idea. There is, there, there is more in the book, so if you guys want to learn and solve exercises, you can have a look at the machine learning uh, refine. There are more uh, different advanced approaches, but this is the simplest one. And just, you know, to summarize this part, so what do we have? We have, um, this is what we call the one versus all strategy. So the first step will be to learn individual classifiers using any linear classifier, SVM, Perceptron, etc., each distinguishing one class from the remainder of the data. And then what, in the second step, we'll combine the learned classifiers using the fusion rule to make the final predictions or assignments. Now, which part is training stage and which part is testing? This should be quite simple. So in the training, how many classifiers were training? Uh, are we applying the decision rule, like the fusion rule, and also in the first step? Like when we're fusing them, like here, right? Are we integrating this in the in the training? Is this, you know, being done in the training, right? Or no? So is this training or is it testing? Or is it both? Who says both? Okay, who says training? Who says testing? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> This should be straightforward. Okay, just read this carefully. I'm not going to answer. Okay, so right here, what are we doing? We're learning, we're training the classifier. So we learned how many models? C models, right, independently. When we learn them independently, we don't care about, you know, like we, we're not using the prediction by other classifiers and feeding it into the training of the, one of the classifiers to improve its learning. This will be ensemble learning. This is different, right, when you're mixing both. But right here, this is the training stage. You're training different classifiers independently, okay, C1, C2, C3. You're finding these lines, these optimal lines independently. Then once you have a new, a new sample, okay, to predict, or another sample right there, to predict its label, this is in the testing stage, you are allowed to use what? The fusing rule. So this is done in the testing stage. Okay, because why is that? You can look at this because we have already trained our classifiers. We know that this is actually, these are the optimal ones. The, this is, you know, the hyperplane that defines our linear classifier. Okay, great. So that's that.